Welcome to TradingNBA.com. This is John's report is for the 26th and a little fake to the downside yesterday as you can see pre-market breaking into new highs uh, relative to our recent period here. And that's surprising you get GDP numbers coming out and they should be ugly because if they're not ugly, I don't know how the Fed would justify what it did. So we must be expecting some kind of huge revision to the downside, uh, which would suggest more... Uh, softening to come because that's the only reason why you would need to cut rates by 50 basis points other than you realize you can't sustain the debt load that you've got but that would be an uncomfortable reality to face and so we'll just go with the gdp because that would be a safer way to go shakeout still rising everything pretty clean from that standpoint uh, we may even see uh, orange now starting to dip down if it dips below our red again we could be in for another up run, keep an eye on it. Hasn't uh, made any tremendous move. NASDAQ clearing those hurdles from before, but way behind the S&P, relatively speaking. So it's got a lot to make up, uh, to catch up there. But uh, relative reading-wise, we're in parity with both. Uh, from a Treasury yield standpoint, of course, nobody wants them, so the yields are having to rise just a little bit to attract any attention whatsoever, because why? <laughs> exactly. And oil, uh, you know, this is an interesting one. Oil dropping. Uh, at the same time, you look at the stockpiles are at record lows. So what's up with that? That's an interesting one. Convenient right at election time, trying to keep those gas prices low. So it's kind of an interesting concerted effort. If the GDP numbers come out positive, then you really have to question it. Yeah the obvious questions of uh, is it being manipulated uh, just for the election situation and of course the euro uh, fading back a little bit but still very healthy in that range they're very happy with that in the eurozone it also helps uh, S&P for fi uh, bilateral trade situation especially because uh, a lot of earnings come from that uh, euro exchange but it's not going to stop gold Yep. That's going to continue, and it's looking beautiful. There is some little negative uh, read here with the MBI white rising, but cyan still under red, and we know what that means. Nothing to fret there. Uh, Bitcoin and that, uh, you know, just bouncing around. But again, those are going to make some explosive moves coming up, and I think that it's just a matter of a short period of time before you start to see them have another secondary run, at least back up towards their highs. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's a ways away, but given what we're seeing from the numbers, unlikely to be any different. Uh, you can see from an intraday standpoint, yeah, they moved it down, and that was that MBI white spike that we looked at. It was just a matter of waiting for that trigger back to the 50%. From the 15%, Magenta started to take over just at the end of the day yesterday, and here in pre-market, you can see exactly what they're doing. All those uh, puts that started to get uh, played are going to be forced covered out, and beautiful run in the pre-market. Uh, we can see it here from an uh, intraday standpoint of the five. Uh, all selling pretty much throughout and then a little bit easing off as we went into the end and then you can see what's happening here in the uh, European session straight up to the moon it's as though peace has reigned over the world and everything is fantastic so there you have it long and short hopefully uh, the sarcasm was uh, real and uh, <laughs> you get the point that uh, there's a lot of strange stuff going on, but that doesn't change the fact that we can see from the readings exactly what they're doing. But a lot of it doesn't make sense to the reality of what we actually see. So welcome to the market. That's been the case for a very long time. So no changes from that standpoint. As always, anything relevant, I'll put in the Skype chat for you. Have a good one. Trade well.